Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for is upon us. Coming to the ring first from Sydney, Australia, the challenger, Sakyo B. The defending world champion from New Belgium, Wales, Joe Kawasaki. The champion's reception. Joe Kawasaki in his 19th world title defense. was quite, quite brilliant back in March in this very arena when he defeated Jeff Lacey. He admits that night he was fighting scared. We reckon that he threw something like a thousand punches which landed on Lacey. How many did Lacey land? Well, no more than a handful. And Calzaghi with that one made the United States sit up and take notice. Lacey was supposedly the new Tyson, the man who was going to just blast Calzaghi aside. It didn't happen, and many a respected judge was saying that Calzaghi's performance then was one of the best ever seen by a British fighter. Will he be able to repeat it again tonight? The thousands here and the millions watching will certainly hope so. Nine years he's been the champion. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Warren on behalf of Sports Network in association with FrankWarren.tv and sponsored by the news of the world, Big On Boxing, proudly present live and exclusive on ITV1 in the United Kingdom and on HBO in the USA, the main event of the evening, 12 three-minute rounds for the WBO. Super Middleweight Championship of the World! Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, steward in charge, Mr. Charles Giles. WBO supervisor from San Marino, Italy, is Signore Eduardo de Cipolli. IBF supervisor from New Jersey, USA, Mr. Lindsay Tucker. Timekeepers at the bell, Mr. Gary Brennan and Colin Roberts. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest 
From Manchester, England, Mr. Phil Edwards. From Hartford, Connecticut, USA, Mr. John Lawson. And from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Senor Jose Rivera. And inside the ring, the referee in charge of the action, working for the 139th time in a world title belt from Leeds, England, Mr. Mickey Van. And now, for the thousands in attendance here in Manchester, England, and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Fighting out of the red car, wearing gold with black, the visual weight 12 stone even, 168 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one. 20 victories, including 13 knockouts, only one defeat with two bouts even. And he is unbeaten in the last four years. Originally from Cameroon, but now living, fighting, and training out of Sydney, Australia, the most worthy of challenger. Official weight, 12 stone even, 168 pounds. He has a perfect professional record consisting of 41 bouts, 41 victories, including 31 knockouts, with 24 of those knockouts in four rounds or less. For almost a decade, he has ruled his division as a champion, making 18 title defenses successfully, and he is now recognized as pound for pound, among the best fighters in the world, from Norwich in Wales, presenting the reigning, defending, undefeated WBO, IBF, super middleweight champion of the world, the fighting power of Great Britain, Joe instructions in the dressing room just to make my commands at all time I want no notice with the head shake hands very corners good luck fellas with the Joe Calzaghi looks back over his shoulder at Sakio Bika and the first thing you notice there as they stand face to face is that Bika is in terrific shape he's a big fella half an inch or so taller than Joe Calzaghi who stands six foot and look at the sort of condition that he's in the question though Apart from just strength, is he going to have the boxing skill to live with Joe Calzaghi, who this week has said that it just depends on him. He says, if I fight at my best, no way this man can beat me. Well, Calzaghi now 34. How many of those virtuoso performances does he still have left in the bag? 12 three-minute rounds, and here we go, the action underway. Calzaghi been a professional since back in 1993 and certainly for my money that performance against Lacey was one of the very best performances I've ever seen by a British fighter or indeed any fighter in the ring Bika just catching Calzaghi with a right, chopping right hand as he gets in close he's not afraid to dish it out with as few of the noughties as Mickey Van would say with the use of the head and straight away Calzaghi's right into his face and Calzaghi, if he does have a failing, or can have a failing, sometimes it's that he does get dragged into macho, toe-to-toe -to -toe wars of fights when he doesn't really need to do so. Calzaghi has to be extremely careful tonight. This could easily be a much tougher fight than the Lacey fight because this guy really has nothing to lose and everything to gain. And he's fighting for the championship of the world and he's got pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world in front of him. Joe's got to box a sensible fight in the first quarter of this fight. 
one of the key factors maybe as well as that left hand of Calzaghi almost strayed low there as he came in and tried to throw a body shot at Beaker is that that left hand has been a, a lot of a problem in fights and years gone by fought against Evans the Shearer remember last year then it was with that damaged hand he had to fight almost one-handed for much of the fight and against Robin Reed going back much of the same and Calzaghi lands with a good straight left in close Roars of support from the cornermen, and uh, Calzaghi is trying to turn this one right into a brawl in the opening round. Wrong tactic, John. Sorry, wrong tactic. I, I just, you know, Beaker's a real strong kid. Calzaghi's got to give him respect because he can't just walk in and have a punch up with this kid. Beaker getting in with a body shot as Calzaghi comes in close and ties Beaker up inside. Calzaghi trying to use the superior st speed there. A couple of good body shots and picks Beaker off with two flashing hooks to the head as well. But Beaker, you can see, terrifically strong, leaning on. Joe's got to be very careful about head clashes. Obviously, Beaker's used to being in fights like this and has demonstrated previously in his last World Championship fight how dangerous he can be with the head. Well, interesting sort of opening round, and Calzaghi showing that he's only too ready to get in close and mix it with Beaker. Good body shots from Calzaghi, and Beaker felt lows, forced back onto the ropes. Last few seconds of a fascinating opening period. And Beaker made to miss with that wild left hook, he missed by some distance. Calzaghi landing more shots in the opening round. Interesting old uh, fashioned exchange of glances from Calzaghi and Beaker as they stared into each other's eyes at the end of the first round. This is not Calzaghi jabbing and moving as he did against Lacey. This is Calzaghi wanting to show that he's more than just a boxer, that he's a strong man and he's prepared to take Beaker's strength away from him. It's the macho man approach. Is it wise, I wonder? Well, OK, John, if you look at it like that from the te television's point of view, HBO's point of view, that's what they want to see. But what we want to, what we need to see is Calzaghi go back to, go back to the brilliant form that got him, that got him the victory over Lacey. Enzo Calzaghi, who's been alongside his son, of course, right the way through his amateur and pro career, said he didn't want to hear talk about the stunning performance this time. He said, forget about Lacey, think about this man. And the only thing which matters at the end of the day is the W, the win. Can Calzaghi actually get the win to keep the story going? Well, you know, Beaker's not going to get a second chance to make a first impression on Calzaghi. Good this left hand from Calzaghi, solid shot, and another one. But Beaker clipped him with a counter. So he's got to be careful on his way, and he's got to keep that chin down when he starts to unload, because that's when Beaker is at his most dangerous. Calzaghi wanting Beaker moved away by the referee, and Mickey Van saying, no, you're holding on, fight your way away from it. Good right hand this time from Calzaghi, and Beaker is not throwing as many punches quite clearly as Calzaghi, and that's a good attack from Calzaghi, but he doesn't want to get caught by those swinging counters from Beaker. You're laying on, Sakio. Come on, that was the instruction from Mickey Van. Well, Beaker's trying to use his, his physical strength just to try and slow Kawasaki down, so if he can lean on him where he's physically equally as, as strong as Kawasaki, that works in his favour. Kawasaki now just waiting for Beaker. He likes a fighter to come at him, does Kawasaki. Always at his best when he's against somebody who wants to force the fight. The stinkers on his record, and let's be honest about it, there have been one or two, if you go back and think about that fight against David Starry all those years ago. There have been one or two dodgy ones for Calzaghi, and he's looked best against aggressive types. He certainly has, he's like a matador against the ball. When he's got the guys coming at him, he spears him with that lovely southpaw jab and the silky smooth skills that he has.
little complaint to the referee from Calzaghi and Bika getting told off. Think again for holding and leaning on. Last few seconds of the second round. Calzaghi a bit of showboating and a terrific left hand and another one. And Bika couldn't avoid him. at the end from Calzaghi and what was that about there was punches clearly thrown after the end of the round and that was dramatic to, put, to say the least and Calzaghi showing contempt for Beaker at the end one shot straight on the button hands low and another one, that time Beaker just misses. The bell goes sometime just after this, and the punches just keep on going. Well, Beaker didn't like the, the shot he took after the goal from Calzaghi and just bit the bullet and went after him. Well, and then Calzaghi gives in a bit of the taunt, and a lot of purists don't like to see that. Well, what about that? Into the third round. Calzaghi must be winning it, but Mickey Van now saying, come on, cut it out. Let's stick to the letter of the law. Yeah, Joe's won the first two rounds for me. Busier, a better presence in the ring. Beaker's just a little bit crude. Calzaghi again with the gloves low, taunting Beaker, inviting him to come in. This 19th defence equals, among others, Eusebio Pedroza, who shared the ring memorably with Barry McGuigan, with Henry Armstrong, Hurricane Hank. Well, sure, you know, the welterweight champion of the 30s and 40s, homicide Hank, I should say. Yeah, Kawasaki's obviously made a you know, reasonable amount of money in boxing, John, but, you know, respect is the ultimate currency for Joe Kawasaki. You know, he's not interested in, like, the big fortunes now. He wants to, the public's adulation. And the boxing writers respect, and the only way he's going to get that is to take guys like this out. Duke, I must just ask you, just look at Beaker's protected guard, it is so high. Well, that was a wild right hand that it missed by a country mile. But yeah. Calzaghi's inviting him in. What about that guard at Beaker's? Yeah, the cup's way up to his chest. It's one of them old-fashioned ones, John, to protect him from the body shots. It rides up, it doesn't matter where he starts it from, even if he's down by his waist. Once he starts jumping up and down, it rides its way up, so... That's it, that helps him. Bika never been stopped. Only one defeat against the very awkward Sam Solomon that was back in 2002. Calzaghi at the moment not looking to me as though he's as sharp as he was against Lacey. Well, it's a completely different fighter, obviously, John, and you know, this guy brings a lot more physical strength than what Lacey ever did. He's a lot more raw, he's rugged. Calzaghi three times an ABA champion before he turned professional and, of course, never defeated in 41 professional fights. Good body shot, good left hand. Oh, beautiful little turn there by Calzaghi. Dropped his hands, invited Beaker and spun him round. That's Beaker that's in, in the corner where Kozaki was. Well, Beaker's starting to look a little bit frustrated. He's strong, and when he leans on like that, he's certainly the match of Kalzaghi for sheer brute physical strength, and there was a right uppercut went in in there. Kalzaghi contemptuously keeping those gloves low and throwing in what he hopes are going to be decisive hooks. Oh, this boy's strong, John, I tell you, he's very, very, physically very strong. And once again, a bit of Mickey taking from Kalzaghi as he pats him on the top of the head. Come on, in that Calzaghi fight, in that Calzaghi corner, I tell you, his father Enzo is not at all happy with the tactics that his son has adopted so far. He 
thinks that he's sloppy, he thinks that he's throwing too many attempted knockout shots and not boxing his way into the fight. He wants to see him throw the jab, Duke. Well, what Joe's started, I mean, he's, his father's right because you know, there's a lot of pressure on Kawasaki tonight to look good. Everybody expects him to win, but, you know, the TV wants him to look good. And in doing so, it will set up the, the massive mega fights that are out there for him. But he's got to go back to doing exactly what he does best, and that's get behind that southpaw jab, hold the centre of the ring, and just get the presence of the ring from there. Keep Beaker on the back foot, pepper him, and just outbox him. I'll tell you one down. thing we've already seen is that Beaker can take a shot. He he's can take those hooks when Calzaghi's landed, and when he leans on, Beaker terrifically well conditioned looks arguably the stronger man maybe that's just an impression that's a good shot from Calzaghi but Beaker takes it well again good chin yeah he certainly is a strong man John as you already said but uh, you know, oh that's a good uppercut from Beaker on the inside Calzaghi said beforehand he's quoted at 50 to 1 on by the bookies believe that one and Calzaghi said I wouldn't take 50 to 1 on in a fight between a lion and a mouse well, maybe that's carrying it a little bit too far, but Beak is giving him trouble in here, just with sheer physical strength. Possibility, remember, of big fights down the line. There's whispers about Bernard Hopkins coming out of retirement to face Calzaghi. Maybe the winner of the Kessler-Bayerbite uh, fight in Copenhagen tonight. And we'll hopefully see some of the action from that one a little bit later on. Yeah, Kawasaki's got a, when he gets in close to Beaker and the infringements start, he's got to turn his head away because that's when the infringements could get a little bit nasty, the heads might start coming in. Beaker's very dangerous with the right uppercut. Another one goes in right on cue, and now Kawasaki tries to start putting his punches together more effectively, and a buzz of acclaim from his fans at ringside. Oh, and Kawasaki almost out of the ring, and you cannot do that to Mickey Van quickly in there. And now, is he going to take a point off Beaker? I wonder. He's certainly going to give him a big, big lecture. I don't think he's going to take the point away, but he quite easily could have done. But it was unintentional, John, because as Kawasaki went through, the punches were already on the way. You know, I've got Kawasaki winning all the three rounds, all the three completed rounds so far. Just needs to really just start getting back to his boxing. Pop the jab, put the points in the bag, and this fight will come together. Solid body shot again from Beaker. He's lunging in a little behind his punches, Kawasaki, trying to get in range to land what he thinks will be winning hooks. The left hook, remember, is the one which over the years has done so much damage to so many fighters. That was the punch which put Chris Eubank on his backside back in 1997. And Eubank said he'd never been hit so high. Now look at this. Pika is prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Calzaghi. The heads go in. Calzaghi calls on his cut. He's cut badly. Boy, referee. Mickey, Mickey. Mickey. That's the cut over the left eye, and here's how it happened. It was a head. Crest. Heads went in, and Enzo Calzaghi saying it wasn't an accident, it was a headbutt. And Frank Warren protesting to the referee, Mickey Van, and they put a smear of grease over Calzaghi's left eyebrow, but blood is still seeping down from what looked to me to be a pretty bad cut. Now, was that a deliberate headbutt? No, it wasn't a deliberate shot, a headbutt, John. But it was, it was unavoidable, you know, there's a clash of styles here. And this is how Beaker fights, this is his normal kind of a fight. Now Joe's got to go back to doing what he does naturally and what he does best. He's got to change his game plan, he's got the experience enough to do just that. He can win this fight, but he can do it now at range. Instead of getting in to a dog fight with this guy, turn your head away on the inside, don't look to the referee to separate you. It's worth saying as well that there's no chance now of the sort of technical draw that Beaker got against Marcus Beyer because this now has gone four rounds, so it goes to the cards. So this fight will now have a positive result one way or the other, one would assume. It won't be a draw as a result of a cut. And Calzaghi complaining all the time about Beaker's use of the head. See, Joe's fighting on anger now. He's really angry. He's got the cut. He lost his temper at the end of the round, which is partly how the cut was caused. And he oh, caught... Good left hand, Duke. Good left hand. And Beaker rocked back by that, but takes it well. He does take a good shot. Kalzaki just going to put the punches together in bunches. Keep this guy at bay. Kalzaki. 
angry cut. And there's another one round the back of the head from Beaker. And the head goes in again from Beaker. And Calzaghi's protesting to the referee. He is furious about this. And now Mickey Van tells Beaker once again, do not use the head. Is he going to take the point away? Boos and jeers from the crowd. And he has. He's taken the point away for deliberate use of the head. That's about right, John. It was blatant. Blatant use of the head from Sakio Beaker in the fifth round, point deducted. Calzaghi is absolutely livid in there, but he's allowed himself to get dragged into Sakio Beaker's sort of fight. And look at the damage again, starting underneath the left eye as well as over it now of uh, Joe Calzaghi. And it's the head which has done the vast majority of the damage around that eye. Calzaghi's got to keep their head moving. He's just got to pepper him with the jab, keep the punches flowing nicely, keep the chin down when he goes out. That's better by Joe. Doubling up on the jab, good handwork, good speed work from Calzaghi. In and out, landing to the body and stepping back. Not allowing himself to get caught in those... Oh, that's a good right hand, though, from Beaker. Calzaghi felt that one. Yeah, they give one to take on the power ball. You know, Calzaghi just doesn't like getting hit, and when he does, he loses it. Closing seconds of a dramatic fifth round. Calzaghi finishing strongly. But Beaker is a hungry, hungry fighter. Turning into a war, this one. He's got to keep his chin down, he's got to keep his chin down. He was caught by a terrific shot from Beaker as he just walked into that one, Calzaghi. Again of Sakio Beaker, and that was the moment that caused him to have a point taken away. Well, John, you know, I've said this before, but somebody should put a glove on Beaker's head because he's using that plenty. Kazaki's just going to keep a nice high guard, keep his chin down, and look at the beautiful work that he did behind the jab at the end of that last round. In the sixth round now. Championship distance, let me remind you, 12 rounds. Kawasaki can stand this man on his head, he really can, with his just his natural boxing southpaw skills. But Beak is just, you know, he's, he's very cagey, he's very dangerous. He loops in right handers over the top, he throws a nice right uppercut when they're in close, and obviously, when all else fails, he gets the head working. I've said in the Kawasaki corner, just get back to your boxing, box this man, and that's what Kawasaki's trying to do now here in the sixth round. The contemptuous stuff of the early rounds when he was swinging in those hooks. That's gone and the head's going again. And Calzaghi, I think, arguably trying to return fire with fire there. He was almost leading in with the head and he's dropping his gloves again. And that is tempting fate. What is he doing in there? Well, Beaker's corner, they've, they've, they've seen that Beaker can get through with the right hand when he throws it. And he's throwing it and landing and getting good success behind it. Caught him again! Keep leapt, the in, down. leapt in behind the right hand, did Sakio Bika. And you can hear perhaps in the background, get that right hand going. That's the shouts of Angelo Haider, Bika's manager. And again, the heads clash and rub inside. I think Calzaghi at the moment in that respect is giving as much as he's taking. Yeah, he's getting very frustrated in there. And another right hand from Beaker comes through and Calzaghi cannot afford to let him do that. Beaker is giving Joe Calzaghi all the trouble he needs here. Nearing the halfway stage of the fight. And at not one point really has Beaker been staggered. He's a better punch by Calzaghi on the inside now. Just starting to find his range with the combinations. So just look at the determination on Sakio Bika's head, on Sakio Bika's face. How much does he want this? See what Bika's doing on the inside, he's kind of switching southpaw to lead with the right hand lead. The crowd trying to stir Calzaghi to yet greater exertions. 
stamping and chanting from the fans, many of whom have made their way up from Wales. Balzaghi trying to work that jab. He's having problems getting past the right hand of Pika. Bika, we were told, fights like a wild animal. There's Joe Calzaghi's girlfriend. And what she's making of this fight. Well, John, I think the key to victory for Calzaghi will be anticipation. He can counterpunch. He can counterpunch this man to death if he, you know, if he just times it right. Well, I've got Calzaghi ahead in the fight, but he is cut. If he can just keep on doing that, keep on peppering Bika by, with the jab then he should be able to box his way through but Bika is so strong he's not been moved he certainly hasn't and you know when Bika feels himself being outboxed that's when he's at really kind of dangerous because then he starts taking the fight to Kawasaki and gets really naughty that's how you saw that big swing from Bika coming from a long way off and was able to just block it almost contemptuously. But he's certainly got a huge amount more respect for Beaker than he had earlier on. Well, Beaker's time on the right hand to perfection at the moment. It was just a worry about how well Calzaghi was going to be able to motivate himself, how well he could get up for a fighter who he regarded as perhaps of not being in his class. Heads go in again, and the Calzaghi protests to the referee, and it really caught Calzaghi pretty flush. I think it was the forehead of Bika once again, which went hammering in, and Calzaghi protested. And I tell you what, Sakio Bika, for any sort of fighter, is an absolute nightmare because the head comes forward crashing in again and again. The thing is also, John, when he took the head shot, it, uh, Beaker followed that with a right hand, so John's taking two really hard shots on the jaw. That knocks your senses a little bit. He sends you out of your game plan. Enzo Calzaghi said the jab's crucial, and here comes Calzaghi. Beaker shrugging his shoulders as much as to say, well, I'm not hurt. What are you doing? The cuts perhaps shouldn't be a problem, Calzaghi's uh, father was saying, if you can just work behind the jab. Well, that's all well and good, but this is Calzaghi's instinct. Joe Calzaghi is not a man to stand back. He does get dragged into exchanges, and here he is trying to just out-macho Beaker again, and a big attack from Calzaghi. Beaker takes them all. This guy's he's made of teak wood. He's just as hard as they come. I mean, we kind of feared that this would be a much harder fight than Lacey, and I'm telling you, that's exactly how it's working now. Joe's got to be on his game tonight, and he really does, right up until the final bell. Beaker will not be denied. There again, the head of Beaker as Calzaghi ducks in. Referee having a word with Beaker once more. He's already had one point taken. Is he going to have another one? Well, not at this point. Well, what a really, really tough fight this is turning out to be for Joe Calzaghi. Take a look again, and this has been once again... Oh, look at that. That was... You could feel the pain of that. It was right onto the temple. I tell you, Joe Calzaghi in the morning is going to know he's been in the fight. What you to do is move on your feet. Get in three. Breathe. 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 How are you scoring it, Duke? Let's take a look at how it's going at this stage on your card. Well, I've got it a bit closer than that. You've got it by six points. I've got it a wee bit closer than that. Amateur style, right? This round, amateur style. Light, rhythm. Rhythm and timing, amateur style. He's starting to blow, you know. He's corner and Enzo Calzaghi, animated as always, trying to stir his son on to yet greater endeavours. Eighth round coming up. Calzaghi talked this week about maybe even going on in the next couple of years to emulate the great Joe Louis. Joe Louis, as he was known over here, Joe Lewis in the United States, great heavyweight champion of the 30s and 40s, 25 successful defences he had. 
And Calzaghe wants to stay around for a couple of years and to keep on winning. He's got to get past this fella first. They've done a pretty good job working on that damaged left eye. Well, when Kawasaki does this and he stands at range and just puts the punches together like that in little combinations, and Abrika doesn't have a clue as to what to do. He's so strong, though. He's not been moved, Bika, at any stage. No, he's full of confidence, Sean. I watched his ring walk, and he had the same look in his face when he was walking to the ring as he does now. Totally impassive, like a poker player. I'm not here for a holiday, he said. Well, he certainly proved that. Not a man to upset, Sakio Bika. Kawasaki leaning in behind the jab and once again getting dragged into that maul and the head's going in close. Well, it's the only place that Bika can have any real success is if he's in close. It's better from Kalzaghi, in and out, using his hand speed and mobility. Yeah, better boxing by Kawasaki now. Finally got his boxing brain on. Doesn't have to get involved with Bika, just keep just keep touching him with that jab, follow through the straight left, and then just keep giving the lateral movement. Lovely straight left, good shot by Kazaki. It's starting to have the look of a fight which is going to go the distance, this one. The work rate of both men dropping a little here in this eighth round. Certainly not been the virtuoso performance which some might have expected from Calzaghi, but it takes two to tango in boxing, and Beaker will be a handful for anybody. Yeah, he's rough and he's ready, John. And this is where he's most effective when he's got Calzaghi up close. With a little flurry of punches inside from Calzaghi, finding the way through to the head of Beaker. Made to miss a little bit uncomfortably. I don't think Peek has landed a glove in this round on Joe. Last few seconds of the eighth round. The fight now looks as though it is going the way of Joe Calzaghi. They've done a good job on that cut and that cruising around the left eye. And Saki Obika's corner man saying, you are not doing what we've told you. You're not throwing right hands. You've got to be first with the right hand to the southpaw stance of Calzaghi. And they were clearly think, imploring their man to up his work rate because the fight, they believe, is slipping away. That's about right, John. He needs some big rounds to turn this one around. It's just Kawasaki's out boxing him over the last couple of rounds. And so Kawasaki warned fans, warned armchair fans as well, that it might not be pretty. The most important thing is to win it. And Kawasaki's found a way past. Good left hand from Kalzaghi, he was caught by the counter, but that was more of a stumble than anything else. The power shot in there was the solid left hand from Kalzaghi. Kalzaghi's got to be careful, he's trying a 1-2, and then he's just sort of falling in on top of Bika. He's got to be very careful about the heads there. Yeah, Bika's complaining to the referee now about Joe Kalzaghi's use of the head. But it was an intention after that last little combination. Certainly not a tea party in there tonight. Oh, Kalzaghi caught by a right hand. Bika trying to use his strength to drag Kalzaghi once more into a brawl. Now, Bika's corner is saying to him, hit the cut. Hit the cut and it'll open up, and that's about right. The little one twos, you know, the straight rights that he's trying. He's trying it right on the cut. That hurt, Joe. Good left hand from Beaker. The left hand lead. He turned the glove as he came in and caught Kalzaghi. And Kalzaghi, just for a moment, wanted to lean on and buy a moment or two. What a grueling fight this is turning out to be. Sakio Beaker is still right in his face and he's absolutely unmarked, you know. Kawasaki doing a good job in keeping his chin down, particularly when he pulls out of these close exchanges. But he is 
in the pound for pound category and you would expect him over the last quarter of this fight now to show why heads going in again from both men been a messy brawl of a fight this one Calzaghi, I suspect, will say after this that this has been as hard as any fight he's had in his professional career. He's been tagged by that right hand now, and he's caught again, this time by left from Vika. The African having greater success in the ninth round. He, he has had to throw caution to the wind, Vika. He needed a round, and he's won this round. He's certainly won this round, and he's opened up that cut again around the left eye of Calzaghi and beating him to the jab. This is a good round for Beaker. Caught Calzaghi in the closing seconds, and right hand right on the bell, and that was a bad round for Calzaghi. That's how we're reading it. Let's find out what Barry McGuigan makes of it. It was an absolutely bad round. I agree. Uh, that's the first round he's lost, clearly, Calzaghi. Uh, Calzaghi... This is going to be the toughest nine minutes of his career. He's got to get his act together. I agree with Duke. He lost his composure early on, probably carried away with the moment and got too excited, lost his composure, didn't stick to his boxing. Now he's got to show the heart of a champion, hold his boxing together, box this guy, keep him at range, pick him off and not get caught with any sloppy, untidy punches because this guy is immensely strong and he's going to come on really strong. He's tired. He was caught at the closing are. stages you and you can hear in the beaker, <laughs> store, in the beaker corner they're saying he is tired. The right yeah, they Inside, love it. They love what they've just seen in that round. Bring it over and open you can up expect the a real big round from Beaker now. You push him back that round. Tenth round of 12, Calzaghi we think is ahead, but Beaker is coming on strong. The crowd trying to raise the Welsh champion. Joe, Joe, the champ goes up. Well, he'll need, to need the crowd to lift him now, Calzaghi. I mean, he's, he's winning the fight. I've got him winning the fight quite comfortably, but he just needs to keep his, his game on. He's got a box, he's got to stay away from trouble. He can't afford to get dragged into the sort of mall where Beaker is at his strongest. And there you see, Paul Calzaghi around. That's not a knockdown, but Calzaghi trying to go toe to toe with Beaker and straight away into trouble with the terrifically strong man from Cameroon. Obviously, what Beaker lacks in technique, he makes up with just raw aggression. And now he's looking for that honey punch. Lennox Lewis sitting just a few feet away from where we're commentating. Wonder what the former world heavyweight champion's making of this one. He's uh, reading this fight for HBO, the American network, who are taking this. They've got around about 30 million subscribers around the United States, and this one going free to air in America. So there are millions of people watching Calzaghi in the United States, and they are seeing him have a tough, tough night. It's getting messy in there, John. Both boxes are guilty of fouling. Beak has been like a caged animal in there, he really has, at times. Well, the referee didn't say break. Calzaghi's within his rights to do that. Beaker didn't like it. And look at this, Beaker is angry now. He's the angry man. Don't get involved, Joe, just pepper him. Show him your class, show him your boxing skill, just touch him with a jab, then follow through. Calzaghi. A wild-looking right hand, he was almost nailed by a right uppercut counter inside. Mickey Vans had a busy, busy night. What was it? 139th world title fight. Oh, and Calzaghi doesn't want to get drawn into that. Look at Frank Warren in the background shouting at Calzaghi, get your gloves up, protect yourself. Well, John, it's turned into a free-for-all. You know, because he was like a... It was almost like he was a prisoner to the ring, so the bell set him free, and now he's just... It's just going for it. Beaker trying to bully Calzaghi around, getting the head in close. Calzaghi again, allowing his gloves to drop low. This is energy sapping and grueling. Calzaghi can't afford to take any kind of unnecessary risks. Box, box, box. That's all he has to do to hang on to his championship. Use your discipline, use a sense of discipline. That's the message. And Calzaghi had another ragged round there. I think he's winning this. 
but he's having to dig so deep. Look at Frank Warren there. You told you everything. You've done everything opposite. Everything opposite. He is not happy. And here's some of the action again from that round. Calzaghi dragged around by Beaker. Just for a moment, I thought there was a shot going to go in while he was on the floor. Look at this. Well, it, just, it was like, you know, two gunfighters in the middle of the street just taking shots at one another, they were just going for it. It's pub car park stuff, that. Sure. He's yeah, well, in some pubs, I should have. Okay, now guess mm. what you Don't worry, but you're way too bad in. Get the jab working, bring that up and cut in. Bring that up and cut in. You've got to keep this in sec. Inside. Right. 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 Inside. The man with nothing to lose has everything to gain, and he's still in there pitching. Enzo Calzaghi is trying to stir Joe to greater things. Calzaghi, we think, is ahead. But Beaker is still there, still dangerous, immensely strong. Less than two rounds to go. Calzaghi in his 19th title defence. Kazaki's right eye starting to swell up as well now, John. They're talking about him fighting again in February. I'll tell you what, it'll be uh, a week a week or two before the bruising heals and the cut heals. Look at that again, the heads clash inside. Now this guy's still in there, John. He's still physically just as strong in this round as he was in the first. But it's good to see him start sort of showing out to the referee the distress signals. Calzaghi now just needs to work away behind the jab and try and stick to his boxing. Easier said than done, though, as it has been throughout. The man who has the ring nickname, the Scorpion, Sakio Bika. Not because of his stinging punches, but because he was actually bitten by a scorpion when he was 12 and it almost cost him his life. And thereafter, that was his nickname. The Scorpion is still in there and is still dangerous. It's Kazaki he wants to hold on now. He's got to be tired, John. It's been as physical fight as he could ever have won. And every time he gets close to Beaker, he has to hang on to him. Because that's where Beaker's so dangerous. Joe should pepper him, just try and pepper him with a jab. Pick, pick, pick the jab. Shoot the left hand down, straight down the middle. Well, it's almost too late now for any sort of change of tactics. We've seen how the fight is. Kalzaghi going back to work with the jab, trying to stick to his boxing skills. But we just know that at some stage, once again, he's going to get dragged into the mill and the brawl. Heads again. Oh, he comes and Vika again. coming, boring forward, catches Kalzaghi once more with a right hand. This guy's a nightmare to fight, John. He's like an octopus, his arms are everywhere. He uses everything he's got. I mean, you'd expect that in world championship boxing. Be interesting to hear what the two corners have got to say at the end of this round. Heads once again. And Calzaghi protesting to the referee. But it's his head, it's his in the face of Beaker this time. And I think it'll be Calzaghi who gets the ticking off. It is indeed. Last few seconds of the 11th round, there you are, Calzaghi caught right on the bell by a right uppercut. Close round that one, gruelling fight this has been. Let's go to the corners and hear what's being said. Breathe, this is the last round. Breathe. Listen, Dan. Breathe. Listen. Pull that short. Suck it in. Pull them out. Pull the short out. Listen. This is it. This is it. Suck it in, Zach. Look at me. Breathe. Just breathe. Right. This round is the last round. You're going to have to knock him out. Uh, so you're going to have to go forward, and you're going to get straight well, punches, work your guts out, you can knock him out. If you want to be out. world champion, you have yeah. to get everything is left in your body this round, you've got to do yeah. it. You've got to okay? go to war here. Like go to war. war. You get, you boxing, man, right, mate? You're letting yeah. him come on to you. Right. Don't let it too late. Don't start swinging him, Joe, I'm telling you, mate. Through the straight lanes. Straight, straight, straight lanes. lanes. Straight lanes. He's going to come like a train now, straight punches. He's going to come like a train is the last bellowed instructions of Dean Powell in the corner of Calzaghi. Calzaghi, five points ahead on Duke McKenzie's card. It's a little bit closer on mine, 
but certainly the Australian corner believe that their man has got to knock Joe Calzaghe out if he is to win this fight. Three minutes remaining of what has been a messy brawl of a fight, but dramatic in its own way. Calzaghe has three minutes to just box to retain his title, we think. Well, Bika, you know, needs to knock out Kazaki's just down his toes because he's a different class when he gets up on his toes and starts popping the jab. You know, plenty of lateral movement, nice quick shots. And Kazaki is having to take shots from Bika as Bika comes ploughing forward and looks at the referee. There's a low one gone in and Kalzaghi doesn't like it and Bika being ordered away to the corner. Timeout, says referee Mickey Van and Kalzaghi caught by a low one, he claims. Was on the blind side, I have to say, from where I was watching. Couldn't see from my point at ringside. And Mickey Van's going to have another word now with Beaker. And is he going to take a point away? No, I don't think, he's, don't think so. I think he's just saying to these two fighters, come on, let's just have a proper fight in the last couple of minutes or so. It'll almost be interesting to hear from Mickey Van at the end of this because it's been one of the dirtiest fights that I can remember for a long time. Yeah, Van will say, clean up your act. You know, you're a professional world champion, a new Beaker challenger, clean up your act. Oh boy, oh boy, has this been a real tough one. It has been one very, very tough fight indeed. Well, Beaker hasn't made Kamzaki look good tonight. That's an understatement. He's had to, you know, really drag it out from the, every kind of trenches that he's got just to keep her head. Look at the left hand around the back of the head from Calzaghi. Clash of heads again inside. Look at that. And the referee's got to have a word with Beaker, surely, and he is. He's allowing him to carry on. Mickey Van allowing Beaker to fight on. Calzaghi has dished out his own fair share of the rough stuff himself. Takes a right hand as Beaker comes crowding in again, trying to just find that one bingo punch in the last minute of this round with more time remaining than that clock tells you because of course there has been the stoppage because of the low blow. I'll tell you something, John, there won't be a return. There'll be no return clause in this contract. No, I don't think, uh, I don't think Joe Calzaghe will be going looking for a return with this one. And I strongly suspect that Mikel Kessler, if he wins tonight in the fight against Marcus Bayer, that he won't be wanting too much of this man either. Because he is such a handful and he's coming forward again immensely strong. And you have to give him huge credit for giving Calzaghe one of the hardest nights of his career. Physically, certainly, if not in terms of a boxing test, Calzaghe has really had to dig so very deep. John, I have to reiterate what you just said. This is Kazaki's hardest fight today. Nobody's given him a hard time like this before. Not over 12 rounds, it just doesn't happen. This guy's been in there and he's, you know, Joe's had to fight for every inch and every round. Kazaki trying to provide the grandstand finish. He's tagged by a left hand as he leaned in close. And there you go. End of the fight. Kazaki hugs. Sakio Bika, he thinks that he's done enough to win it. I would suspect that is probably the case, but what a very, very hard night that has been for Joe Calzaghi. Sakio Bika has made him fight all the way. That cut to the left eye came so very early. Clashes of heads. Bika had a point taken, and it was just typical throughout. There was a low one from Calzaghi, and look at that. Calzaghi gave a little low one, and then the response was that. Beaker's idea was, you know what, if he's going to give me some, I'm going to give him some back. Clash of heads as well. And this, I suppose, again, summing up the whole fight. Calzaghi trying, trying so hard to land flurries of punches, but Beaker just kept on coming. What a hard fight. And now we await the judges' deliberations. An English judge, Phil Edwards, an American judge, John Lawson, and Jose Rivera of Puerto Rico. Beaker, I don't think, can possibly think he's done enough to win that. He was told by his corner he got to have the knockout. Calzaghi holding his arm above his head, waving to the crowd, thanking them for their support.
A very, very different fight to the fight against Jeff Lacey back in March. He thinks he's won it. His father, Enzo, he said at a very early stage it could be a mess. Don't expect necessarily for things to look fantastic. The win is what matters now. Has he got the win? We can find out, I think, and join in the, in the ring our Master of Ceremonies tonight, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Jose Rivera and John Lawson both have the bout 117. 110. Phil Edwards scores at 116, 111. All three to the winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated. Still WBO, IBF, Super Middleweight Champion of the World. Joe Retains his belts. The story goes on victorious once more. 117, 110 on two cards, 116, 111 on the third. We had it much the same. Barry McGuigan scored it 117, 111. Duke had it by a margin of around about six rounds. Calzaghi winning it emphatically, but what a hard night's work. Boxing can be a very tough game. He had to fight it ugly in there tonight, Calzaghi. Or if he didn't have to, he certainly dragged into an ugly fight. Cut early on, you can see the damage there around that left eye. And Joe Calzaghi will not be forgetting Saki Obika in a hurry. Just making his way now to the corner. And I think now we can join Jim Rosenthal, who's with the man who's still champion, Joe Calzaghi. Joe, how hard was that fight uh, for you the toughest of your career? Oh, not at all, basically. Um, I'm not making excuses, you know, tell Frank. Um, I was, you know, I don't want to keep on going on with that hand injury. I pulled out in July, injured my hand, I basically went to this fight with no sparring. And there was, I was away, I was taking a 50-50 gamble fight in a fight with uh, not a great hand. So I'm disappointed with the performance, couldn't get off to what I'd like to get off, you know. To, so um, win's a win. But of course I'm disappointed, I want to put on a spectacle. Um, he was a dirty fighter, he got caught quite a lot with the head. Uh, I just couldn't get off. You know, I wasn't 100% tonight, and it showed. Were you over keen to impress tonight, do you think, with that uh, American audience there as well? Possibly. Maybe, you know, I wasn't too you know, keen on my, on my, my um, sharpness, in ring sharpness. And maybe I was looking for the early knockout. And, uh, you know, it was disappointing that uh, I couldn't finish it. And, um, obviously, I didn't get off. It was a bit of a disappointing fight. But listen, at the end of the day, we're not robots, and uh, this is a great <laughs> fight last time, not so great this time. It's very unusual to see you there with a mark on your face. Uh, they were caused by headbutts, you would say, and you can see them down here, and I think it proves your point. Yeah, he's very coming with his head all the time. That's the fourth round. Um, yeah, it, 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 all the time he was coming with his head. He got cut me, and I got a big bruise inside my head. You know, it didn't hurt me at all, this punches. He was strong, physically strong, and, you know, a cagey, long arms. And, you know, my, my lack of uh, ring sharpness uh, showed tonight. I'm disappointed, but wins a win. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back and, and doing a good performance. Right. Just finally, tactically, did you get this one right? Probably not. Oh, maybe it was a bit too um, hasty to start with, looking for the knockout. Um, maybe a bit too excited. That I used to do that a bit in my early career. I didn't quite get off. You know, he was a lot more cagey than I thought. Right. Holding on the inside, coming with his head, and, uh, you know, he lasted 12 rounds. It's still a W on the record. You're still unbeaten, Joe, and you gave us a entertainment, high-quality entertainment. It probably wasn't just only for you in there. Uh, not really, but listen, hopefully <laughs> next time I'll be back my best. Well done, Joe. Thank you. OK, let's move across and have a little word with Frank Warren here, uh, shall we? Um, Frank, were you upset with him there? Yeah, I was, uh, especially when he was uh, showboating and dropping his hands. I don't like that. You know, Joe's a tremendous, uh, for me, he's a tremendous fighter. He's a great boxer. But he was hampered with that bad cut. I mean, it's a terrible cut. You look at it, and Frank Black in the corner done a great job on it. But, um, you know, the one thing you can't doubt with Joe Kawasaki, he's, got a, he's a, got a fighter's heart. You wanted uh, big paydays for him in the spring. Is that still on after this performance, do you think? Oh, absolutely, of course it is. Uh, you know, we, we're going for the big fight in uh, late February, early March. That is a definite. Holding his hands down there, like uh, that must have terrified well, you. Well, it does. I don't like any fighters doing it, and I mean, he knows better than that. But at the end of the day, like he said, he's, he, he, he entertained and, uh, you know, not my cup of tea sometimes, but... Um, maybe I'm a bit too much of a purist. OK, Frank, thank you very much indeed. If you just go down there, we'll, we'll, we'll pull Barry in here now. Barry, um, 
you you were upset with him as well there weren't you the way he started he was a bit contemptuous and, and he almost paid a price didn't yeah he? well the, the, we, we can start off by seeing the clash of heads here which is this guy was tremendously strong and awkward and it was we, we knew that he was going to be a difficult guy to begin with but it just seemed to me like a clash of clash of styles really and if you can have a look here at this clash of heads in the fourth round and uh, you know he was struggling early on he was being a bit showy a bit flashy his punches weren't landing properly he wasn't using his jab and uh, here's where things got untidy and really this guy was extremely powerful and Joe took him for granted a little bit and lost his his boxing didn't use his style properly and he kept banging the head in this guy and, and when he got close he would rough things up and you know immensely strong Joe again just failed to, to use the tactics failed to use his jab keep the fight at distance pick his punches like Duke was saying and got drawn into a scrap just one round after another and it was really I said after the ninth round this was going to be the most difficult nine minutes of his life and it turned out to be that that, that way he's just uh, and even at the end here he tried to come on strong near the end and look impressive but you know it was just one of those difficult nights and it certainly was a night that he could showcase his talent and ability what a completely different performance in the very same ring to the one he played a completely different yeah. style completely different tactics well, the old he scene, got involved Jim, in the war in of there of course he did but the old saying styles make fights this guy was immensely powerful very awkward and a really difficult guy to look good against it wasn't the perfect opponent we thought he was going to come forward in the straight traditional way but in fact he came roundhouse and up the middle banged his head in and sure. was very blatant I thought Mickey, Mickey Van was very very, you know, very easy on him with the head. He should have actually...